I am the youngest, uh, or rather the junior most on the stage. Firstly, it's a privilege to be here. And before I go any further, I think uh, at least for the last 30, 40 years, the strength of the Oxford Bookstore has been, the pillars have been the women, starting with Mrs. Bhagat Preeti, Anjum. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, I think it's very woman dominated and that's why it's so, it's so rich and gentle. It's a privilege to be here. I think my first comment would be that the Oxford, some people call it bookstore, some people just call it Oxford on Park Street. Somehow it manages to bring together people who matter people who know. Just take a look at Karakara Boshyach in Steje. I mean, if you really uh, have a panel of 100 people searching for the right people to be here, you would get all these wonderful people. People who matter, not because of their achievements, not because of who they are, but people who matter because they have matter. They have depth. And I think my first thought is that this bookstore, it's been through many ups and downs. I'm sure if you go through uh, profits and losses for years and years, you'd see a lot of red marks over there because people didn't keep reading books and they went on and on. Friends, we live in an era of fast food, fast chains, fast everything, fast track. When Denise and I got married, I told my father-in-law, shouldn't have, Panch Bachur Jodi Amra last kori, Pochish Bachur anniversary party the Because nothing lasts. For a bookstore to last 100 years is quite an incredible achievement. And I will share with you why I think it has lasted. We also make, we also sell books. I think would have been a nice would have been a nice way of describing it. A lot of advertising gurus over here. Because many people came to it, I don't know if they still come to it for that reason, for reasons other than books and get stuck onto books. I'll share with you two or three quick ones of mine. The first time, uh, the first, my first memory is, I must have come there before that, but we were doing a play called Charlie's Aunt. In school, Godridge Engineer, if you remember him, he was the director. And we were all boys in St. Xavier's. There were no, St. Xavier's Collegiate School, there were no girls. But there were many girl roles. Mr. Engineer would choose a play with many girls for some reason. And I was playing this man who would become, pretend to be the girl, you know, Charlie's aunt would pretend. So we had three girls, not three girls, three or four pe boys who loved being girls. And Mr. Engineer told me, Barry, could you, because you're going to come last one for makeup, could you take these four girls down to Blue Heaven? Blue Heaven, I think, was just across the road. So I said, so for what? He said, no, they've got to wear their switches and their wigs, etc. I said, and then? He said, and then you walk back with them on, the st on Park Street? I, I, when you were told to do something, like the boss told me, you've got to start, so I had to listen to him. So I said, okay, I got the money. And he said, whatever is left over, you can, you know, you can keep it sort of. So that was enough incentive for me. So when I got the money and came down in blue heaven and the teacher said, Barry, you don't wait outside. It's not safe. You go to Oxford across the road. There was I in Oxford, pacing up and down, no intention to buy anything. I told uncle, I can't remember his name, but there was an elderly gentleman over there. Mr. Vachani or this? Motwani, Motwani. I didn't know his name then. Those days we didn't bother to ask uncles their names. We just called him uncle. And he said, what are you doing here? I said, no, I don't, I'm not come to buy any books. He said, that's fine, you can look around. You know, it's that spirit. Uh, I didn't have any Jhola bags. I don't think there were Jhola bags those days where people would be worried about books going in. So that is my, me do we finish off in one go? Or? I'll finish off in one go? Yeah, okay. So that is my memory of, uh, of, of this openness 
of the doors, the doors never being shut, the, the, the doors and the windows and the heart and the mind never being shut. That was my first memory. Uh, finally, we actually walked down, my, my friend Anuj Ray, may soul rest in peace, brilliant actor, actress. He and the others walked down with all their what have you on, on and there was I on the opposite side. Anyway, the other memory is a, is a rather personal one. The year I was born, my father joined Oxford University Press from Orient Longman. And from the time I was a kid, I remember him saying, when people would say, you're the assistant manager of Oxford, and, or the manager, or the branch manager, or the general manager, as he kept going up, Oxford, and he would say, yeah, but not the one on Park Street, meaning the Oxford University Press of 400 or 500 years ago. I think my father, if he was around today, wouldn't have, mind, wouldn't have, I think, bothered too much if people thought he was the general manager of the Oxford on Park Street. A lot has changed, a lot has, this was about 60 years ago. So I think that is something that even he would have taken pride saying that he belonged to Oxford Park Street. And my last uh, memory was, I won't tell you her name, but there was a girl and I, and we couldn't afford to meet anywhere else on Park Street except outside Indian Hobby, India Hobby Center and maybe share a, an ice cream. But once again, we would say, we're meeting where? At Oxford. We would go in, we'd pretend to be looking at books. Sometimes we were caught looking at, not really looking at the book because ulto chilam, because we weren't paying attention to the book. But uh, I ha it gave me my first, one of my first romantic experiences. So I would remember Oxford as a child, uh, Oxford as the son of my father who said that, and as a person who uh, went into or introduced himself into a bit of romance. But on a serious note, these are all serious things because when you come in there, the smell of books, etc., that kept you going. And my last memory was, is whenever you didn't get anything anywhere, people would say, go to Oxford, you'll get it there. You know my soft-spoken friend, you may have heard of him, Suhail Sait, a soft-spoken bloke. He and I used to do plays, all sorts of plays, really badly also, some not bad. He came and told me, you're going to do Amadeus. I said, what's Amadeus? Uh, Amadeus is a Peter Schaeffer play where it's the, it's the middle name of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He didn't tell me that. So I said, okay, if Sohail said it, I just did it. You know, I was, he, was the, he was the Tom and I was the Jerry or whatever. And we looked everywhere for it. And the, some people turned around and told, uh, told us, why didn't you go to the place where you'd get it? We looked in the Calcutta Book Fair for it and didn't get it. And we came to Oxford Book and Stationery. That's, that was what it was called then. And within, I think, 10 minutes, we found it. So if you come to Oxford, you will find romance, you will find dignity, you will find your own space, and above all, you will continue to grow. Your love for books will continue to grow in this temple, church, and mosque for books. God bless Oxford. Thank you so much, Barry. Shugatada. Yeah, we'll break in the middle. Friends, what a delight it is to be here at the uh, inauguration of uh, this new edition of the uh, Kolkata Lit Fest, but also, more importantly, uh, the uh, 100th anniversary celebration of uh, Oxford Bookstore. Uh, my mother, Krishna Bose, uh, writes in her book, Lost Addresses, that on 26th December 1946, her 16th birthday, she was brought by her father to Oxford on Park Street to buy books. On that occasion, uh, she chose Cecil Beaton's book of photographs and the translations uh, into English of the short stories of Munshi 
Prem Chand. My own memories of uh, Oxford uh, go back to the 1960s, and uh, I too would come to this uh, bookstore mostly with my maternal grandfather, Charu Chandra Chodhuri. There was a children's section in the back, but I rarely went there. My grandfather was a subscriber to the Times Literary Supplement. Sometimes it would not be delivered to his home address, and we would have to come here to get it. And he would have me read most of the reviews that the TLS carried. He taught me that a good review must not just be a summary of a book, but must contain the argument of the reviewer. So after reading these reviews, discussing them, we would come to Oxford Bookstore and pick out the best books that he had selected. And there was, of course, Barry's uncle, I think it was Mr. Motwani, always sitting on the right, warmly greeting us. And we would, of course, browse through the books that were already there, but Oxford would always offer to order the books selected from the Times Literary Supplement by my grandfather. Browsing um, was absolutely essential, uh, whether in the choice of books or of records. And I still have very, very fond memories of uh, visiting Sisi Shaha's record store, and we would go into the little glass cubicles, listen to endless numbers of records, and then my grandfather would pick out only the very best. And the same with books at Oxford on Park Street. Now, Oxford, of course, must be uh, placed in the general ambience of this neighborhood, uh, as uh, Barry just uh, you know, pointed out. Uh, after buying books at Oxford, you could go and have ice cream at Quality next door, or Magnolia's uh, opposite. You could even go and look for a new hockey stick in Castlewood, um, or go for Chinese at Waldorf or Peking, cakes at Fleury's or Trinka's, and of course, a steak in Sky Room, which unfortunately does not uh, exist anymore. I have to say th that on this particular celebratory occasion, that we had many personal and family connections with the Paul family. I would come to the bookstore mostly with my maternal grandfather and my mother, but my pediatrician father, Dr. Shishir Kumar Bose, uh, was uh, the child specialist of the city who looked after uh, the children of the city more generally, but also the children of the Paul family. And as he was building up the Netaji Research Bureau in Calcutta, on Elgin Road, uh, he received quite a lot of support uh, from this family. I still remember that when the first international Netaji seminar was held in January of 1973, the guests were put up at the brand new Park Hotel, which had emerged as the first alternative to either Great Eastern or Grand Hotel. Taj Bengal was not even on the horizon at that time. And the uh, windows of uh, Oxford uh, were decorated with the photographs of the foreign delegates who had come from the different uh, parts of the, of the world. I must confess uh, that my engagement with Oxford and Park Street was most intense uh, during the 1960s up to the middle of 1973. And then something happened. I joined Presidency College Calcutta, and the venue of my activities shifted from Park Street 
to College Street. I even gave up playing tennis at the South Club. And um, so Park Street then became that domain of elitism which we tended to avoid as I spent most of my days and late into the evenings uh, in the coffee house on College Street or in the Presidency College canteen. This was the state of affairs until I left for Cambridge in 1978. But then on my visits back to Kolkata, I would return to Oxford. And then I must uh, talk just a little bit for a couple of minutes about Oxford Bookstore and what it became in the 21st century under the leadership of Maina Bhagat. And it's such a wonderful experience to see her here uh, with us today. Um, my mother was a regular, uh, usually releasing new books uh, at Oxford. And there would be wonderful, good discussions in the, on the mezzanine level of the bookstore. And I, too, occasionally came and released new books and had wonderful intellectual uh, discussions. Now, in this day and age, it is extremely important for book lovers to support independent bookstores. Now, even I, because I travel so much, often read books on my iPad. But there is nothing like just soaking up the aroma of new books in a bookstore such as uh, Oxford. And you know, this online experience can be very disheartening. My own sense that is that Indian publishing, like Indian media, is in something of a crisis. And that is partly because it is so easy to manipulate all kinds of algorithms online to promote absolute trash. And that's why I would urge everyone present here and those of you who are listening to us uh, speaking from this platform to patronize your local bookstores, wherever they may be. And Calcuttans, you know, must continue to support uh, Oxford uh, Bookstore. It's, you know, really very important. And I'm truly glad that this bookstore has lasted more than 100 years now, even though we are celebrating its uh, centenary. And I wish Maina and Anjum and everyone associated with both the literary festival and the bookstore very well. And let the Oxford bookstore go on to score a double century. Thank you very much. Check. Wonderful. Thank you, Shugatada. Wonderful to be reliving memories of a bookstore that is over 100 years old. And a lot of these memories go back decades. Very, very special. Anita Di, would you like to speak now? Check on. Good evening, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me today here in the august uh, array of personalities on the dais. Um, I will share some very personal memories of a Bengali poet and writer about Oxford. In fact, when Anjum wrote to me about this centenary celebration of Oxford, a little more than centenary, uh, I first thought that I never realized Oxford is, uh, you know, over 100 years old. I always thought it is as old as me, and I didn't realize that it existed over three decades before I, I was, uh, I actually came there. 
unlike uh, Professor Shugato Bosch, who incidentally was also my batchmate in Presidency College in history, I don't know whether you remember, I was studying economics. He didn't look at girls. Oh, he didn't look at girls, he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> and Jahorda was my senior. So, <clears throat> I never came here in the 19... <laughs> 1960s, I never came here. I first came to Oxford when I came back to Kolkata after uh, nearly one and a half years, uh, one and a half decade of uh, being in the IAS, completing what is called Ogyatobash or Bonobash. And I brought here my two children because I was worried that they should be getting an opportunity to see books and also see good films in Kolkata. Uh, so it was a very uh, it was an interesting experience because there are not too many places where you can flip through or browse uh, books. So the children used to enjoy, but like most children, they would never go to the children's section of the books. They would see other books and insist on buying those. The stationery section was interesting because that was very attractive for both me and my kids. We used to buy lots of things, pens, notebooks, and uh, sets of pencils, erasers, everything was there. And I used to buy lots of letter papers and envelopes. Though it is said that letter writing is a forgotten art, it is because of Oxford that is to buy letter papers, actually write letters, handwritten letters, and post them to friends. So I don't know where these letters are, but Oxford was definitely one reason why I continued writing letters. And in those pre-Facebook uh, era, Book launches were not very common, book releases. So we had our dear old College Street, but College Street books were never launched in that sense. Books would be just out in the market. So Oxford used to have book launches, and uh, it, was, it was very delightful then. I had come to several of these launches, panel discussions, and once to my great surprise, my Bengali publisher, the little magazine Onushtup, Anil Acharya came and released six books in Oxford. That was a moment of great delight for all of us. In fact, one of my very recent uh, uh, visits to Oxford was uh, uh, to, this, is, this answers your question, Mayanaji, that do children read books? I uh, released a book written by a 13-year-old girl, a student of class seven in a Kolkata school, she has written a full novel which was published. She is already in, into her second novel, she's writing it. And all her classmates along with her parents and along with their parents came. And it was lovely to see these children who are avid readers. They only, not only read the new novelist book, but other books also, English and Bengali both. So I feel great hope looking at them. And I am sure that just as has happened with me, I never buy stuff at Kindle, I always buy hard copy books and I like holding them and reading them. And it is also a great thing that we have been able to tide over the, Oxford has been able to tie over, tide over this uh, pandemic. Many of favorite bookstores of mine in Delhi has closed shop, they are no more there. But it was a very tough time, both for publishing industry as well as for uh, the book lovers. Because unlike Bengali books, who is during pandemic, Books were being delivered home from College Street by cab to people's houses. It was wonderful. But for English books mostly, uh, you need to come to a bookstore. So it is a difficult time. When footfalls reduce, uh, publishers also have a difficult time. But fortunately, we have got over that time. We have started going and meeting again. And it remains a beautiful space. That's why it is much more than a bookstore for me. This space, the way Oxford is arranged. You know, open space below, and then the balcony up, and there is this, the side where you do the book launch upstairs. Almost reminds me of my old school's uh, library area, where from top we could see what is happening downstairs. So it has a, a very different feel as a, as a place where you can see books by staff and also meet people only once for I don't know who was that like um, like uh, Mr. O'Brien I was trying to hold a book Ulta and engage in some long conversation but somebody came and tapped saying that please don't stretch it for very long so 
that was the end of it. But otherwise, Oxford has always been a very, very encouraging experience for me. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me today. Thank you so much, Anita Di. And really, it is so special to hold a book in your hand, feel that turning the pages and that fresh smell of a new book. That's really, it's quite heady. Uh, should we have Shubhada now? I don't know where to start because my association with Park Street uh, and Oxford Bookstore, particularly because of Jeetpal and Surendra Paul's wife, Shirin Paul. I have done many things for Park Hotel. I did mural, I did painting, and also Shirin requested me uh, that both the daughters, Priya and Preeti, if I actually give some attention to them, they used to come my college street house and particularly Pati was very good in, in drawings, watercolor. This way actually my association with Jitpal, Park Street and also I did couple of art fair that patch of green land is there in front of APJ. And uh, that time I had a college called v College of Visual Arts. And about 60, 65 students, I was alone teacher. And I know one day I called Hussein as he was in Calcutta. So Hussein Paritoshin jointly inaugurate that fair in that place. And thereafter, many, many things. But because of Preeti, Preeti went to study architecture and interior design. He came, he became completely other lady. I don't know. When I saw her first after a couple of years, I saw that about 20, 25, you know, street children around her, and he's just going either and other, you know. And she wanted to change the face of art, uh, 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 Park Hotel. But somehow, when they have taken the Oxford, he com she completely changed the interior. It was fla a flat first, and with, the, uh, with iron rod, she actually transferred the whole place as if a you know, two floor. And Oxford was Oxford. Everybody all over the world, whenever they are in Calcutta, they used to go to come to Oxford to collect books, to see books. Not only Shatujit Roy or many other people. Also, I remember. In 70s, Prime Minister of Singapore came and spent more than half an hour in Oxford. I also brought Gunter Grass, and he was very happy to see his translation of his Calcutta diaries. Also, whenever I need special books, 
even i saw my couple of books selling recently from niyogi they printed my quite book book books book and that is also available in uh, uh, oxford bookstore i know the first day i actually published with dresden artist the portfolio called subtle that was inaugurated in first in oxford bookstore mr irani inaugurated that and two of my german friends thalem and uh, uh goshel came to calcutta in that time and the inauguration was beautiful so these are the these are my memories with oxford and still i have very very uh loving place i used to come very often to see books to collect books and also there is several function uh i used to join for inaugurate launch the books and many others so this is my association with oxford and moina she knows very well and recently shirin published his book beautiful memoir and they are everything she has written the experience and etc and relation with friends so they are she mentioned everything thank you thank you oxford and i hope it will continue as a uh, heritage also icon of our city namaskar thank you so much shubhada and yes hopefully it will continue as a heritage repository of ideas and knowledge i just want to share before we move on to prithiman chatterjee and uh, jawhar sharkar a memory that some of you at least will share who amongst you were members of the oxford lending library is there anyone here ah shumit so you will remember somebody called mr johnson and i thought barry was talking about him because he had so much to do with my love of books this was somebody who was there as the librarian right at the back of oxford yes and if he thought you were interested in books he would keep out books that he thought were wonderful and discuss that and ask you to read them and once a year they had a sale where you got books for 10 rupees and 20 rupees and i remember i hadn't heard of gabriel garcia marquez then and he kept aside uh, solitude for me i bought it for 20 rupees a hard bound version with a sale thing stamped on it and what a wonderful place it was to learn to share ideas and he had so much time to give to develop your tastes and ideas so i'm glad somebody here shares that with me uh, should i ask shundar to speak good evening fellow uh, travelers i'm tempted to say fellow travelers and uh, those who have assembled to listen to us and to see us you know it was occurring to me while coming here and i i actually passed oxford on one side and castlewood on the other side how lovely it, it it would be an innovation and how lovely if it would be if this reminiscence and this conversation we are having uh if we could have it while strolling down park street uh with with all of you with us i say this because to me 
the memory of Oxford book, Bookstore is part of a larger visual memory, which is of the Park Street, Free School Street area, which we used to know in the 60s, uh, 70s. I really cannot separate Oxford Bookstore from its environment. My clear memory of a bookstore really is a little bookstore called Park Book Bureau, uh, which Barry might remember. It was it was Park Book Bureau was a was a little bookstore opposite St Xavier's School Gate, hmm. uh, opposite Thirty Park Street, and I remember. Park Book Bureau because it is because that's where we bought our school books, uh, all our school books. And of course, there was the journey of uh, carrying all these heavy school books on one's back and uh, trudging down from school, which was St. Xavier's, to the Park Street Circular Road Junction in order to catch a bus home. Why I mention this is because there were lots and lots of books all the time. So one grew up in an atmosphere um, of books. As far as the bookshop itself is concerned, it does not need repeating, but I am repeating it um, nonetheless, is that Oxford book Bookstore, somebody just said, is more than a more than just a bookstore. Uh, you go to a bookstore for various reasons, but to make either you go to a bookstore to buy a specific book, or you go to a bookstore because it is a place to be. It is a place just to be and and relax and look at books and think about books, and then maybe buy a book. When we were younger, I said, I'm talking about the 60s, of course, a lot of the visits to the Oxford bookstore were, in a sense, left unfulfilled because we did not have the funds to buy the books. So there it was. And the, the alternative, of course, uh, was libraries. Now, of course, one can get into a discussion or debate on the difference between a library and a bookstore. But to me, uh, Oxford Bookstore was also a library because one went there just to browse, sit down, read, buy, or not buy, as the, as the, case, as the case may be. The point, uh, really, that I'm trying to make is that Oxford Bookstore, to me, was a sort of a default destination. Uh, whenever uh, you know, a visit was planned to this part of Kolkata, it was inevitably Oxford. So Oxford was part of the kind of mental, cultural, you know, landscape going to Oxford. That is why Oxford is so important, not just as a bookshop. And it is heartening uh, to see Oxford also innovating into, into other areas, selling books in, in the Indian languages, selling, uh, getting involved in art, getting involved in music, films, and so forth. Of course, there remains this uh, very important uh, issue which was mentioned by someone of e-reading. What, uh, what happens in the future when e-reading um, uh, grows, grows common? I, I'm sure, I haven't checked, but I'm sure Oxford also sells Kindles and other uh, e-readers. Uh, speaking for myself, I am, I have no difficulty in confessing that I'm getting a little bit addicted to e-reading because it has its advantages. But there are certain authors, I mean, and this 
again, harks, harks back to once, uh, you know, when one was much younger and was um, used to seeing Rovindra Rachanavali at home, Sharad Chandra Rachanavali at home, Bunkin Chandra Rachanavali at home. There are certain authors I would, n I would never collect in e-form because looking at them on the shelf, looking at their works on the shelf is so important. It's as important as the reading. That to me is important. What is also important to me is the inscription of, you know, books are not, I mean, again, I'm stating the obvious. Books are not something that you just read today. They, they are also repositories of memory. The flyleaf of a book which has been presented to you with a name and a date, that evokes memories. When you give a book to someone, you, you give it with your heart and soul. And I certainly have to think for a few minutes before I inscribe a book that I'm giving someone. So we can continue this discussion of hard copy vis-a-vis -vis, uh, e-book ad nauseum uh, and obviously come to no conclusion. But I am certain, given Oxford's, uh, given Oxford's background in innovation, I am sure Oxford already is or is going to deal with uh, e-reading in some way or the other. So much for now. Thank you. Thank you, Shundar. And our last speaker in this very illustrated panel, Johar Sharka, Johar Good evening, <clears throat> everyone. And nice to see you, Maina, and nice to see you, Bharatidi. I'm seeing you after a long time. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what, uh, mm, why I was selected last, because everyone else has said the best things. But then I will take a look at the way, uh, at certain uh, oddities, if one may put it, Four of us here are from Sindhavis, and Sindhavis is just down the road. And three of us, I'm sure, I'm not sure about Shugoto, had to travel by bus. Uh, and anyone who traveled by bus to Sindhavis, its location is awful, awful by any standards. If you get off at Lansdowne Road, you want to walk one and a half miles. If you get off at Park Street, you walk one point three, four miles, whatever. Now, Park Street was always more endearing because of the street itself. The street is much more than uh, little, uh, little lights. It has to put on a lot of makeup now. But the street has it, had its own life. I can't say we were part of it. I could only say we were passengers. We saw it while passing. We used to get down at, uh, at the crossing of Park Street and uh, uh, Chaurangi and walk. And when you walked, you walked through practically the heart of Calcutta. I remember uh, Castlewood, I think Shugato mentioned, Castlewood was more than just a sports equipment store. The hobby center was somewhere where I could get lost for a whole lifetime. And then I think we had the uh, lots of things up here, mags, magnolias. Up above we had um, madhouse, madhouse that lasted about how many years? Four years or five years? Yeah. Uh, four years, five years. So, but the point is that among all of these sources of entertainment, what was a serious bookstore doing? So kids like us would go past it. It's very forbidding. It reminds me of a strict school teacher. We used to go past it. Past it until some friend had to buy some book for someone's birthday and took me inside. And in, so once inside, it was intoxicating. Now, people who love books love it for many, many things the warmth that a book conveys against the clinicality of a tablet. A tablet is very precise. It's so clinical. 
but a book is something that you can read and sort of keep on your chest and go off to sleep. It could fall off without cracking any glasses. So things like that, people who grew up with books would look for haunts for books, look for places where books are available. And as a, someone who grew up in Calcutta in the 60s and 70s, let me tell you, there were no institutions like Star Market, bookstores and others. There were only one bookstore of consequence, and that was Oxford Books. Oxford Books was the only bookstore of consequence, and after that, Seagull came up. Actually, Seagull came up much later. It started with Park Circus, and they moved there. And then we had other, other beautiful haunts, like the one uh, below Grand Hotel, that sort of moved on. We had, uh, had Chakravarti Chatterjee in College Street. We had Das Gupta in College Street. But the difference with Oxford Bookstore that I started traversing much more after I left school. After I left school, I joined presidency during the height of the Naxalite period, which meant that there were no classes for more than half the year. And when there are no classes, you get sick and tired of bug. I mean, when you have classes, you can bunk and see cinema. But when you don't have classes, you feel bored. And that's the time we started coming in groups to Theatre Road, British Council, that was one haunt, National Library, a second haunt, and Oxford Bookstore. The difference was that British Council gave you academic books. It gave you very precise, under very precise settings, English, history, physics, etc. very, very schoolish. National Library never let you touch books. You sent in slips and went somewhere down there and you waited for one to two hours to three hours, depending on the state of union, union at that time. And then the books would come up. You could glance only at a few select. But Oxford was a free for all. If you came for a book on, I mean, like everyone starts with fiction. And we were hooked on to Alistair MacLean and others. I think kids don't read Alistair MacLean anymore. Alistair MacLean, Neville Shoot, and others, and they've gone out of fashion. When you came for Alistair MacLean or something, you were attracted immediately to a very colorful book on geography. For God's sake, geography, interesting. It's not interesting, it became fascinating. It's a way it appears to you in your true, in its true self. And to reach that true self, one has to come near. It's an endearment that you can get by touchy, touchy, feely, feely. You don't get it from clinical things. You don't get it from very precise. What book do you want? What class do you want? What precise number do you want? Who's author? Does he have an M in between? Oh, God. Here, it was free for all. No one could go around. It's later. Our solvency, if I may use the term, picked up as we grew older. And one started coming more and more, more and more. And for the many, many years that I had to spend outside Calcutta, I used to make it a point that when I go back to Calcutta, among the few things that I will definitely do, one is to go back to Oxford and find out they went to Google when I'm talking about. Google came only yesterday. So they went to Google, so you Google in Oxford to find out if that book is there. You go to buy a book or go to see a book or go to check a book and read 20 others. The exposure that you get by the fact of randomness of reading. Randomness of reading gets you an enrichment that no precision can ever get you. And Oxford to me is, was, is more than a bookstore it turned out to be a cultural stimulator. And it's played its role as the cultural plaza of Calcutta now. Much of Park Street has gone, but Oxford has remained. And God bless Oxford. Thank you. Thank you, Johada. Really special to have this really illustrious panel sharing their memories of Oxford with us. That brings us to, uh, to an end for this session. And before our speakers take their seats in the audience, I'd like to call, yeah, there will be a felicitation with Uttariyas. Come. Should we start with Johurda?
Jawhurda. And Uttariya for you. Shubhada. Why don't you go that side? Shugatada. Barry. Anita Di. I'm sure we can do better than that. I'm sure you enjoyed their memories. Anita Di. Shundur. Anita Agnihotri, Johar Sharkar, Tritiman Chatterjee, Shubha Prashanna Bhattacharjo, Shugatha Bose, Barry O'Brien. Thank you so much. Thank you for making this special. Thank you. <laughs> Johar Singh, Chobi Tulbana, was it? Yes, 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 Chobi Tulb